Tara Wellman here, and it's time for another round of the Four Continents Breakdown, right here on From the Boards. event in Colorado Springs didn't necessarily bring out the big guns, the world contenders that we'll see later on in Nice, but what it did do is give us a glimpse into the progress that some of the teams this season have made, teams hoping to make the top 10 at Worlds, if not higher. Some of those teams didn't necessarily have the greatest event, Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford from Canada being one of those teams, perhaps the most significant. Coming off of their win at Canadian Nationals, they seem to be in a great place mentally, they seem to be trained physically, and really prepared to compete with some of the best in the world. I, for one, thought they had a good chance of competing with the Chinese team to win this event. Things didn't go according to plan, technically, in the short or in the long. Now, they climbed back up in the long program quite a bit, but the technical difficulties in both programs really sapped the energy, sapped the spark and that electricity that they're so good at bringing to their programs. Specifically in their free skate, this is a program that has a lot of emotional depth between the two of them and in their relation to the audience, and it builds all the way through, but it was riddled with technical mistakes. She had some trouble on the side-by-side -side jumps, put her hand down on the last throw. There were little things throughout that you just could tell they were off, and it shifted the mood of the whole program and really the whole event for them. Hopefully, though, they can start at this point and rebuild and maybe peak at Worlds. Now, for the medalists, we'll start at third place and be go backwards here. The Americans. Mary Beth Marley and Rockney Brubaker, third place at Nationals, coming into this event really looking to increase their international standings and, and their season's best scores. They did that by far in this event while pulling off a bronze medal. The thing about this team is that I think they've packaged themselves really well for this season. Compared to Shui and Han, which we'll get to in a minute, I, I think Marley and Brubaker have done a much better job. Their short program, Mary Beth is so young, but this program allows her to be young and fun and lively and bubbly and yet still relevant on the senior ranks. Their long program, on the other hand, kind of showcases the way that they've progressed throughout the season. Now, in Colorado Springs, it was not flawless. Their short program, they're very confident in. Their free skate still has some little things to work out, and some of those things have to do with the pairs elements that are still so very new to Mary Beth. But it was an improvement over Nationals. She stood up on both of the throws. Their twist is better every time they go out. The death spiral is better every time they go out. Things like the side-by-side -side spins are better. They had some trouble on the side-by-side -side jumps, specifically Mary Beth, who fell on what was to be the first jump of their combination. She did the exact same thing in the warm-up. So clearly she still has a little bit of learning to do as far as how to leave that warm-up behind her and go out and compete. But every time they go out, they improve. And that's not a bad, bad trend to have throughout your season, especially building towards a world championship. They have a real shot at becoming a very dominant force in U.S. pair skating because of the quality of the things that they do well and the progress they're making as they go on. I'm very excited to see how they compete under the stress level of the world championships. Now, their American counterparts, the U.S. national champions in Katie Denny and John Coughlin, also did themselves a favor in their world standings in this event by scoring a personal best themselves. However, they were not satisfied with it. Their short program is very strong, and it's something that they, they seem very comfortable with. Of course, that could be said about everything they do. They seem so comfortable with each other and so in sync emotionally and physically and technically and all of the things that make them really come together well as a team, which says a lot for the short amount of time that they've been together. Their pairs elements, their throws are huge, and Katie lands almost everything. Here, she didn't even have to fight for them. They were gorgeous elements. Their split triple twist, one of the best in the entire world. Every time I see it, my jaw drops. It's so big, and it's so powerful, and 
just stunning, really. And it's something that I think elevates them, and you see it right at the beginning of their program, and it gives you a, a bit of confidence in what you might see the rest of the event. Their side-by-side -side triple toes were spot on. Katie missed the first axle in what was to be their double axle, double axle sequence. She singled it, and that cost them in the points. Also costing them in the points are the levels, which is something I'll talk about in just a moment, but it's something they weren't necessarily the most concerned with this season because they're such a new team, but it is something they're going to have to improve to compete with the best in the world. That said, both American teams have set themselves up very well going into Worlds with the possibility of peaking at Worlds and uh, making a strong case for top 10 finishes. Now, the champions at this event, Shui and Han from China, they have competed on both the junior and the senior international circuit for the last couple of years. I'm not really sure why they're still skating on the junior level, other than the fact that they can. Uh, I'm not sure that's the greatest reason to keep competing at that level. I don't really know that it does them much good, but that's a whole other argument entirely. In this event, you got to give them credit for their guts. <laughs> they went out and were determined to throw down a, a quad sow throw and a quad twist. Now, Neither element was clean, which didn't necessarily reflect in the scoring. The quad sow was clearly two-footed and had a, a tiny negative grade of execution, 0.57, I believe, the negative grade of execution on that, which seems very small. Um, the quad twist, if you look at it slowly, and maybe even a, a freeze frame, which I've seen online, it was under rotated. And while gutsy, and impressive that they pulled it off at all, it wasn't clean. It was given positive grade of execution. A little sketchy on that, but what they do is set themselves up well in the scoring, whether they have a little bit of a negative GOE or not, because the base value for a quad is significantly higher than the base value for a triple. Some three points being the difference there. So. The thing about this team is they've grown up under the code of points system and they know how to work it. They know the benefits of taking that risk and the way that it can pay off. The rest of their program was better than I've seen them all season and very consistent, which is not something we've seen from them all season. They still seem a little young, <laughs> particularly when you compare it to their short program and unlike Marley and Brubaker, I don't think their short program does them much good because they skated it on the junior level and perhaps that's why they're still using it because they're still skating as juniors, but it doesn't accentuate their strengths besides their cute factor, which doesn't necessarily translate into points on the senior level. And to me, it's very distracting because they want to be taken seriously as senior level competitors and technically they do some of the greatest elements on the pair scene, and yet they're skating a short program that makes you think of them as, you know, little kids and not senior level competitors. Particularly when you compare it to their long program that's much more mature and much more emotionally involved. It's just not a good package to me of the things that they bring to the table. That said, they're the ones that threw it all down at this event, and while I don't like to see big tricks that aren't clean rewarded as much. I do want to give them credit for continuing to push the envelope and put those things out there. And the things that they did, they did on a higher level than any of the other teams. So they deserved this win. It'll be interesting to see how they handle the pressure and the higher level of competition come the Senior World Championships, which they have said they're planning to compete in. As we all know, skating has become a bit of a numbers game. and Occasionally, I like to go through the numbers a little bit and compare. So, got some notes here so that I make sure I get these numbers correct. But I did a little comparison between Denny and Coughlin and Shui and Han, just to show where the differences lie. Uh, the differences lie in the levels, for the most part. There were four elements that Denny and Coughlin were significantly lower in the point total based solely on the level of the element. The death spiral being one, some of the spins, the lifts, those things that levels are given to, 
Denny and Coughlin aren't there yet. And as I said, that's not something they were necessarily the most focused on this season, but it is where they're losing a good number of the points. In the program components, interestingly enough, it was performance and execution that really came down to the determining factor. Shui and Han having the slight advantage. In interpretation, Denny and Coughlin won by point eleven. In performance and execution, Shui and Han won by point two two. Now there were two other categories that Shui and Han had a slight point oh three, point oh four advantage, but it really came down to that performance and execution, which is interesting considering I felt like John and Katie performed quite well um, and executed quite well. But again, there were a few of those little elements that were given negative grades of execution on the American side, as opposed to positive grades of ex execution for the Chinese team. Really what it comes down to is those levels and then the ability to do those harder elements very well. Just looking down the list here, Shui and Han received nearly a point positive grade of execution on all but two elements. And those two elements that were given negative grades of execution, one being the quad throw sao, and one being their combination, the triple toe, double toe, double toe, that was very out of sync, they were given less than a point negative grade of execution. Now, Denny and Coughlin didn't necessarily receive many negative grades of execution either. In fact, only one on their sequence as well, but the positive grades of execution were not enough to overcome the difference in the levels. And that's where you're going to see a lot of the differences between what Denny and Coughlin have to offer and some of the higher pairs teams come the World Championships. Before we finish today, let's take a quick look at the top international scores this season and how Four Continents might have changed things heading towards the World Championships. Four Continents did, in fact, shake up the top 10 scores a bit. At the top, you've got Aliana Sevchenko, Robin Solkowy, Tatiana Velocizar, and Maxim Trankov. Slipping into third, Shuang and Han from China. They outdid Yuko Kavaguti and Alexander Smirnov, who have the fourth best score. Bazarova and Larionov, they're in there at fifth. Then slipping up to sixth, Katie Denny and John Coughlin with their four continent score. Mary Beth Marley and Rockney Brubaker jumped to eighth with their four continent score. And Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford sit at tenth in that top ten list. Now, not all of those in the top 10 will be competing at Worlds, but a good number of them will be, and it makes the battle for that top 10 very interesting when you see the way that these skaters have progressed, and particularly those American skaters and Shui and Han have put themselves in top 10 contention with their four continent scores. Someone asked me if I thought the U.S. pairs teams are capable of uh, potentially regaining a third spot with their placements at this year's Worlds, and while I think it's possible, certainly by their scores and the area they have yet to improve, I will not be disappointed if that doesn't happen because it's not something we expected from these two teams and they are both still very new and still building. However, in the future, they definitely have the potential of bringing back that third spot. It's going to be an interesting world championship run, that's for sure.